Screening your calls, first blood. <laughs> I know you're hanging around there somewhere. Well, wake up, because it's time for Monster Wars! <laughs> Ready to burn some rubber. We're heading to sunny Southern California, where the hottest site in town isn't the beach, but Anaheim Stadium. That's where the monsters will be waging war. Hi everyone, I'm Luann Lee for the U.S. Hot Rod Association. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, this is Monster Wars. We're set to sizzle with some highly charged racing action. The question is, which of these trucks will be hot tonight? Definitely hot is Dennis Anderson of Gravedigger. He leads in the Monster Wars season point standings with a margin of 29 over Barefoot. Predator, Equalizer, and Taurus are all not far behind. Let's face it, anyone can break into the top three at any time. Here's a look at how the rest of your favorite monster trucks stack up in the standings. And now it's time to send it out to another kid who's definitely hot every night. My co-host, Jim Davidson. Thanks, Luann. You know, if your impression of Southern California is this... Forget about it. Here in Anaheim, it's time for Monster Madness, where nothing is laid back. Tonight's racing action promises to be hotter than the California sun, more happening than Hollywood Boulevard, and I'll be right here in the pit area bringing you all the behind-the-scenes scenarios as they unfold, and I promise to leave no story untold. So grab a seat, dig into that popcorn, and get ready for lights, camera, action. It's time for the monsters to take the air, so without any further ado, let's go to a guy who never needs a second take, our very own master of ceremonies, Joe Lowe. Never needing a second take means you got to get it right the first time. And that's what these guys want to do as they come here to Anaheim to thrill the crowd with the USHRA Monster War. The course here in Anaheim is a tough one. Off the starting line, over just a small set of four cars, and then down as quickly as possible and power up during the straightaway as you approach the second ramp and leap over a set of nine cars. They'll probably finish in the air. The first one across, of course, is our winner. This matchup for round number one features Gravedigger, the points leader, going against the black truck from Michigan, Alan Pizzo's Predator. How you doing today? <laughs> you seen any bad putty tats around? I don't think so. <laughs> Predator, stop procrastinating and join me at the starting line. You'll have plenty of time to catch your dinner when I'm finished with you. The current points winner, Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger. But can he keep it up all season long? Their stage, Predator and Digger. Let's take a look at these guys. Dennis Anderson qualified fourth in Grave Digger. He picked up six points for that one. Eighth in qualifying for Predator. He gets a measly two points for that. He's going to have to work to build up that point standing. So Alan Pizzo brings Predator up to stage. Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger is already there. We'll see you on the other side of the line, guys. And Digger gets a hole shot. Cut a great light off the line, and it's all Digger on this race. Predator had some problems off the line. We may see mechanical problems there, but the winner is Grave Digger, showing you why he is the current points leader. Hey, Predator, why don't you go join the Bird Watcher Society while you still have a few of your precious lives left, you rugrat? 
Don't waste my time with any of your stupid pet tricks. It's very obvious from the replay that Predator does have problems right from the start. He may have blown a transfer case. Jim Davidson's with our winner, Dennis Anderson. Dennis, way to tear it up, and I mean literally tearing things up. You put Predator away out there. Tell me about the run. Hey, it was a pretty uh, crazy run, you know. Um, it didn't feel as smooth as I thought it was going to be. The track is a little choppy. I just don't have it figured out, but... Um, Hey, as long as I'm winning right now, you know, I've got a little ways to go tonight. Maybe I'll get it figured out by the time we get to the final. Is this because you're driving as they pin you as the wild man? Is there something going on in the suspension, or what's happening to you today? Hey, I, I tell you the truth, Jim, I don't know. It's uh, Maybe it's a little bit me, my, my driving style, and maybe it's the track, you know. Uh, like I say, I haven't had enough time to figure the track out yet, but I'll get it figured out. The next two trucks are already coming out to do battle. This will be a battle, folks, a Ford Chevy battle. The battle between Invader, driven by Ray Perkowski, and David Morris's Equalizer. That battle when Monster Wars returns. Oh, yeah! Well, at last we meet, Invader. Prepare yourself for a close encounter of the defeating kind. Surrender now, and I will save you the embarrassment of a humiliating mishap. Are you the best your primitive species can come up with, Primal Earthling? I cannot justify defeat to such a common being. I will never surrender. Prepare to do battle! sound of the screen. Ah! Where are you, you coward? Playing dead? <laughs> Equalizer and Invader staged. These two trucks have met twice before this year, and Equalizer was victorious both times. Ray Perkowski drives Invader. He qualified seventh today. David Morris aboard the Equalizer was third and qualifying. And now it's side-by-side -side racing in round number one for these two gladiators. The monster trucks capable of jumping 110 to 115 feet. That's 14 car widths. They're up waiting for the green light. Showtime. Invader with a hole shot, but Equalizer coming from behind. Invader just doesn't have the power. Equalizer wins it. Equalizer with a three-quarter second lead over Invader moves on to round two. Your winner, Equalizer. The replay shows us two very important facts. Number one, these monsters can jump high, very high. Check out Invader, 20 to 25 feet high. But going high, it doesn't win a race. It's how far you go. And when you're going up in the air, you're not going straight. That's how Equalizer took out Invader. A nice tall jump, but he's not able to land quickly and get the power up. He's got to control the truck. And then a very high jump over the cars. Here comes Kodiak, Mark Bendler aboard, as action continues on Monster Wars. The Kodiak truck's been having trouble this season, and he's going against one of the meanest trucks on the circuit, Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. What kind of name is that? What are you, a bear, a camera, or maybe a planet, or an asteroid, or... Is Kodiak one of those wimpy diet sodas? Huh? <laughs> three times this season, these two trucks have met. Carolina Crusher has been victorious all three times. Gary Porter aboard the Crusher qualified second today. Mark Bendler and Kodiak qualified sixth. Now, Kodiak has had every problem imaginable this year. He's dropped drive shafts, transmissions. He's had power problems, but he keeps on coming back, and determination is what it takes in monster truck racing. Both these guys own 4x4 shops, and they both are experts in what they do. On the start, Carolina Crusher with a hole shot. Kodiak battles back, but it's too late. Carolina Crusher wins it. Gary Porter was right on at the start. Mark Bendler was caught napping in Kodiak. A great hole shot, cutting a good light, and a two-truck length lead for Carolina Crusher. 
This is great racing. A great way to handle your truck up and over. And now speed. He sails over all the cars. Crusher is going to be tough to beat today. Hey, Kodiak. This is your tired old truck. This is your tired old truck in the loser circle. Victory sure tastes sweet. But then you wouldn't know about that, would you, Kodiak? Would you? <laughs> We're in Anaheim Stadium, and round one of Monster Wars continues with Tropical Thunder going against the world champion Barefoot. Everybody wants to take out the champ, and Tropical Thunder gets his chance when Monster Wars returns. Welcome back to Monster Wars. There's much more action ahead, but first, you've seen him tear up the race course, and you've seen him in the pits, and you've frequently seen him in the winner's circle. Well, now he's gonna take you on the road. 1992 world champion Fred Schaefer and his fiance Kathy invite you trucking, barefoot style. I'm on the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. This road trip doesn't start here. Fred and Kathy's road trip begins 200 miles back down the highway in Pontoon Beach, Illinois. We pack our rig and head down the road about 45 weekends a year. It takes me about two hours to load the uh, alcohol and the oil and all the necessary things you need. The last thing you want to do is get 100 miles down the road and remember that you forgot one of your important parts or something and uh, have to worry about turning around and coming back. 